Yo, this is DJ Renegade, coming straight out of the UK. Um, big shout out to the Quebec B-Boys. I guess my story starts in about 1982, uh, when hip-hop came to the UK via uh, Americans coming over and bringing the, the art of graffiti, popping, breaking and all this stuff. We'd seen bits of it before on television but as a, as a cultural invasion I guess that was when it happened, about 1982. Um, so my influences uh, stretch back to around that time. I have local and international influences because uh, when I grew up we, we already had a dance scene in the UK. My sister, my older sister, is actually a dancer. Like a, she used to do jazz fusion, what we call jazz fusion in, in the UK. So she was one of my first influences. And then people like the Electric Boogaloos and Rocksteady Crew. And basically a lot of the stuff that we saw in bits of clips from America, whose names I don't even know. So that's like my dance influences, I guess. Um, in terms of DJing, the first people I, I paid attention as DJs to were um, Grandmaster Flash because of the, the footage from Wildstyle and that. And then later on DJ Cheese. And then again I have local influences like Dazzle Fresh and Master Mix and my old DJ partner Madda and people around them. And then like Cash Money, Jazzy Jeff, you know. So like a, a broad spectrum of influences and stuff. Um, outside of DJing or dancing, uh, I'm a computer engineer. Uh, I used to be an avid comic book collector and yeah, collect records and stuff. So, so you work as an engineer? Yeah, I, I, I basically work as a computer technician, support, network guy, a um, bit of all-round skills. So, yeah. I know there's a lot of talk about the distinctions of b-boys, break dancers, blah, 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 blah. But for me, uh, the, the difference is the understanding of what we do makes you a b-boy. Like I can see someone dance and I'll be like, okay, they don't quite get it. So I'd probably, uh, describe them as a break dancer or whatever. Or you see someone who gets the, the art form, understands the culture of what we do. And that's probably someone I'd describe closer to being a big boy. Having been around for 30 years, the international b-boy scene is um, probably as big as it was in the first generation because the first time round it was like a massive fad that took over the whole world similar to BMXing and skateboarding and stuff and then obviously we know the history it died off and a few people kept it going blah 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 but right now we've probably got the the, the closest thing to that first wave of a massive scene that stretches across the world uh, that's way more connected than it was 30 years ago and seems to have a better idea of what it wants to be and where it wants to go. So that's my impression of the international b-boy scene. The b-boy community could do with a lot of help at the moment I think. Um, communication and information are what's lacking. There are a lot of jams going on right now. I don't know if it's that healthy for the scene. Personally I don't think it is. Um, there's a lot of massive jams that are going on at the same days, like people don't check calendars and stuff like this. I think this is really bad. Um, education wise, I mean I've always been brought up with the each one teach one kind of cradle and I think it's lacking in a lot of places. I've been to many countries in recent times where the information that they have there is really, really poor and I believe that that's our fault as elders or um, guardians of the, the culture of hip-hop or whatever else. 
and uh, people aren't doing their job properly if there's still places in the information age where they don't know what's going on, you know, so we need to fix it. Uh, DJing, everybody's a DJ now, you know, everybody's a producer or whatever else. Um, it's, it's a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, a lot more people can can get into the art of DJing. I don't know if the reasons behind it are right or whatever, but there's loads of jams and these jams need good DJs. So we need DJs to, to start popping up, basically. But again, it's about education. So they need to learn the art form of what we do as well and not just download stuff off of internet and play at champs. I understand the motivation I guess because they want to play the stuff that they see at champs, Battle of the Year, IBE or whatever else but like with everything else you need to educate yourself about an art form you purport to represent so do your research. Um, when I retire let me think I'm never going to retire, and I'm never going to die, so you're stuck with me forever. I was on the subway once, and a, a woman saw my hand, and she says, wow, you're immortal. And I believe her, so, seriously. But seriously, um, just to have made a contribution, you know, just to have, have given something back to the culture, to have changed something in some way, and to be remembered, I guess that's what we all want, you know to have done something to uh, leave a legacy. I'm trying to do that with my dancers, I'm trying to do that with my DJing. In, in anything I do, I try to, to make a difference, or else what's the point of doing it, you know? Like, would you like to see like Soul Mavericks getting really big or something like that? Is that like your, your legacy would like to, to leave? Not even necessarily big, I mean, just the fact that there is a Soul Mavericks is is a legacy enough, you know. We've been around seven years. I've seen crews come and go in that time, you know. Um, the guys are getting better and better. They're international now. They've got a really good level. Um, the same with the, the poppers I teach. It's like, leave a legacy, and if you're really lucky, then that legacy will leave even more, right? Because I'm hoping that the guys from Soul Mavericks teach one day and make uh, a healthier scene than what we had and the same with the popping guys because if every generation doesn't teach the next generation then we're we're screwed really you know the information's just going to keep looping like back to zero every time so i teach my guys how to teach and hopefully we'll have a nice healthy scene at the end of it Um, I've been, I've been on the side of the judging system for years now. Um, Dizzy's put together the R system. It's probably the most uh, advanced one right now. I support A system. I think Dizzy's system needs work. Um, but that's the, the responsibility again of the scene to figure it out and make it happen. Fighting against the system, I think, is a bit immature because it's time and we need one. Everything else is on a, a massive level right now, for sponsorship and events and, and venues and the size of the scene growing and everything. And yet, when it comes to judging, we're still at amateur time, you know? Three, two, one, boom. Yeah, why? Uh, I don't know, come to my workshop or uh, it's my opinion or whatever else it is, you know? I think this is a little bit immature compared to everything else and People outside the scene don't know what's going on, but you've got 10,000 people in a crowd that are not all dancers or b-boys or whatever, it's like, it makes no sense to me that you don't have a system that's transparent and people can see exactly what's going on. Famous last words, uh, thanks to all those who help, the finger to those who don't. Um, be about it really, that's all I can say, don't talk about it, be about it.